are we doing? All good. All good. Yeah. yeah. Very really good. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, pretty excited. So let's go back to the beginning. How do you all meet? Uh, like, unfortunately, I didn't have a choice in meeting. Yeah, we met at the hospital. Ninety-nine. The hospital. Whole thing. Drinking my mom's milk because <laughs> he happens to be my younger brother. All right. Uh, Agram, I met. Wait, you didn't drink your mom's milk. I did that. <laughs> wait, who's the oldest? Uh, but like emotionally, he's I'm the eldest. He's okay. Wait, he is he's he's older, but like physically, he's older. Just to be sure. <laughs> I'm not saying anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, I met Agrim. How do you meet Agrim? I met Agrim through a friend of mine, my school friend, and uh, oh my god. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I am friends with him, guys. Uh, so I met him like that uh, in 20. 15 2015 16 uh, met shamli a long time back uh, i think when we were in 8th or 9th grade yeah mm, when i used to come from moscow for holidays to kuchin i met eighth her 8th or 9th grade charan i'm so one yeah it's on 8th grade and gayu i met in 2018 through my cousin so, so what, what is one thing that you guys do together fight a lot <laughs> argue <laughs> argue you think we're joking but no <laughs> argue a lot <laughs> oh we fight about the stupidest things like which how to get to some place faster like so me and agrim will start fighting oh like, like right now on our way here uh we were supposed to there was a left turn and a straight road both the roads could be taken i said take left sharan said no we'll go straight you know stuff like no, that no sharan no i don't believe you <laughs> yeah. there's no left road the bag is irritated so it's like a continuous it's thing. mainly him getting irritated <laughs> see it's actually a tyrannical yeah. thing there's none of us fight <laughs> have has there been like real fights i mean of like course cat fights no. i can remember the fight when me and arino fighting and you were sleeping <laughs> Okay, so like in friendship, you know, you bicker. That's that's part and parcel of the whole deal. We di- we do like fight, but we also tend to resolve it then and there. Or the next day. Next day, we do fight. Like we have differences in opinion, and that's sort of that's how ideas come, right? The other thing that you guys have in common is content creation. So how do you get started with that? Yeah. So, so my brother has always been taking videos. He's been doing this since like ever since I can remember. Like he's been making funny voices and doing accents and stuff. and i think we all we all did our own thing and then we all slowly got into it and we were all like oh you are doing cool and then we all just we do our own things but we also come together in the vlogs like our individually we have our identities but in the vlog like we cannot be us like it's yeah. like so at times you're together then how do you separate your personal life with your friendship so honestly so when it comes to creating content for ourselves also i mean i i'm speaking for myself here Most of the time, I bounce off ideas like off of these people. I tell them, "Hey, can you help me with this? Can you yeah. sh- tell me what I should do here?" And it's a it's a collaborative effort, even if it's something on my own page. And it's, it's a collaborative effort. It, since we all create content, it's easier. Like there's a common ground. Like there's an understanding of like, oh, okay, like you know, this is what I want to do. This is what you want. Yeah, you are the sum total of the so many people you hang out with, right? So yeah. essentially, all of us are creating together and growing together. Yeah, I feel like we're just stronger together. Like you know, you know, I keep hearing stories about like Indian creators who. like burn out or like they don't have any more ideas and i feel bad for them but like i know that i personally won't ever go through that because if i don't have an idea one day i will message me or shamini message me or guy or anybody they just message saying hey let's do this like we all go through the phase where we feel like we hit burn out or like we yeah. hit like a you know we're stuck somewhere but like yeah, yeah because we have each other like we never reach that point where content is not there Also, Agram was the one who pushed uh, Sharon into social media, right? As far as yeah, as yes. far as uh, pop culture logo goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> as far as pop culture goes, uh, actually, it was not like me pushing him into anything. Uh, like we said, like we used to know each other for quite some time, and uh, Sharon was working a nine to five job, and I was also working a nine to five job. We were not very happy with each other, and we were going to watch, I think, Wonder Woman or Pirates of the Caribbean, one of those uh, movies, and we were at the Escalator at uh, Center Square Mall. And he asked like, me, uh, like I asked, hey, what are you doing now, man? And he, I, told, he said, oh, I'm working a nine to five job now. And he asked me, what are you doing? And then he said, I, I said, I'm also working a nine to five job. And then I asked him, hey, wh- what do you really want to do in and life? And then he told me that he wanted to do certain things, like he said he wants to be an actor and this and that. Then I said, okay, why don't we try doing this? Why don't we try putting a camera in front of your face and then seeing how how that works out? And then we did, like we put a camera in front of his face, yeah, and that's where it started. Yeah, he put a camera in front of my face and kept telling me I'm horrible. <laughs> It was it was it was pathetic. Was, to be fair, to be fair, was he wrong? <laughs> and he was all about like championing people, like not just us. Like yeah. he's all about like if he finds talent yeah. anywhere, he's all about pushing. Agram, uh, from the looks of your posts, it looks like you understand the power of social media, right? You know, it's not just the fun content. You bring about uh, content which is uh, knowledge and social awareness and stuff. Right. 
so uh, don't you see there is a dystopian side to that too because you know utopian dystopia so dystopian side where uh, people get bottled into these confirmation bias bubbles and they think about that but in your content you are fairly centrist and you look at uh, information and you come out with the best point of view or the right point of view according to you how do you do that i wouldn't say that i come up with the right point of view right what i say might not be entirely 100% correct but um, what i try to do is essentially tell people hey something like this is happening in the world have you heard about it then why don't you go and do your own research i pique their interest the rest is up to you right it's, it's like i take you to a certain place i can show you the door this is where hey this is what's happening in afghanistan this is what's uh, happening in chera so i'm telling them a story and then based on that the action they have to take so how do you go about your research as in like because it's very easy to go down one ideological lane and not look at the entire picture which is the problem with social media right you know the algorithm drives you to reaffirm your bias so i would like to say that i am a voracious reader like i i read anything and everything i can lay my hands on so whether that's something that i believe in or or the complete polar opposite of what i believe in i i try to i try to read both uh, sides of the argument and then try to reach my consensus on or my judgment on what i think is happening and then i try to deliver the facts to people and then like i said the rest is up to you like some people might agree with what i say others will fight me in the comment section and that's that's when i have the most fun you said that you know the first time he took a video he was like you're bad you're not good as the same thing that you would get in the comment section right you'd get a lot of hate so how I do you block. deal with hate <laughs> block 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 my block list is more than my follower list yeah yeah <laughs> i just block uh, agram on the other hand doesn't block i <laughs> agram, I, turns, I agram, agram turns up at their house he and says what up <laughs> I think all of us have our own way of doing it, but my favorite way is Aryan's way of doing it and Guy's way of doing it. The hate that we all get are kind of different. So I, because I put myself like in this like fashion perspective, I get like body shaming and like whatever. So I like to get the last word when when I get hate comments, but most of the time I do block as well. But sometimes I like to like expose them also. Because a lot of it doesn't make sense. Like recently, I got a comment which was. your uh, like manu as pillai light i was like the dude doesn't even make videos like what are you talking about so a lot of it it's like it, sometimes you're genuinely curious like where is this coming from why would you say something like that what has caused what has led you I to mean, this i really do understand the haters point of view also cuz like um i also when i like before started like content creation all that like i was also in a place where i was bitter about like other people like doing shit and like you know getting to places so i understand the bitterness but like That's not an excuse. Yeah, that's not an excuse. I don't think hate is a bad thing. Like, as far as people are talking about you, whether it's love or hate, as far as you're staying relevant, even if it's through hate, you're just growing, and you just keep doing what you're doing. So that one comment is that one comment is one more comment. That's more engagement. So it's great. Like, I love the haters. I remember you guys had hosted a talk on Clubhouse last year. I was part of that talk, and I uh, remember you telling me, telling the people there that you were initially very shy to be on. camera so you had a second person or a third person how is it going right now i mean i i feel like i'm much better in front of the camera now because i have no option also cuz this <laughs> camera will come out from anywhere and you just have to be prepared but i mean i think it's still like for me i'm more comfortable when there are multiple people in frame because um it's a little hard to keep the audience engaged if it's just one person at least that's what i think So when there are multiple people, there's like different things happening, and like everybody has like a different Speaking. sort of attention. So for me, it's just a strategic call more than what my comfort level is. But now. how do you separate your identity from the others then, if you're comfortable with their personality? I mean, I think our identity is actually very different anyway. So even when we're together in the same frame, everybody's got a different thing they're known for, right? Like guy who's like the fashion queen. I'm the, I'm the opposite of a fashion. Queen. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fashion queen. <laughs> yeah. So everybody's just got different like identities anyway. That it's not like we're eating into anyone's space. Like even as a group, I think we provide very different, um, you know, inputs and values to that group. So. Ah, uh, do you work as a lawyer right now? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Because my parents. Hi mom, hi, hi dad. Hi, I'm on a school for a bit. So how do you balance? So I'm I basically now freelance. I'm not attached with the firm. Okay. Initially when I was attached with the firm, I had a laptop attached to me at all times. So it would literally be like work 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 and then okay, we're shooting now, so like I'm going to like move away, take a million like natural calls 
uh, to my office. But yeah, I've my favorite moment was I think when we were throwing eggs at each other, and Shamali was like, "Hold on, I have to go take this." And she went to the car. And the, the thing is, like people on social, you, you look like you're having a lot of fun on social media. So yeah. People don't realize the amount of work it goes into. But like Shamali, for example, last year, she, yeah. the amount she worked, it's insane. Like and she almost lost her job. <laughs> And her mind. Yeah, <laughs> I lost my mind. Yeah. So, like so it's was, we've only seen her initially, like before she like properly got into this, like pro like she was always on the laptop, like yeah. always. So the work ethic needs to but be you know, real. But I like actually like that. I like being like busy oh, all the time. Yeah, I don't like being idle. I mean, I feel like for me, if I'm idle, it's worse because an idle mind yeah, yeah. is a devil's workspace. But. Like, I don't know, I, I prefer <laughs> it's, it's modern now. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a devil's co working space. <laughs> but the point yeah. came across. So, Shamuli, do you ever so, feel uh, left out, or is there uh, when their Malayali references come in, kick in? All yeah, do you do you? Yeah, because I, I remember seeing. Especially when he asked me about actors. Yeah, I know, I saw Agram's video and where he showed her a photo of Mohanlal and uh, Mamuti and she says Dilip. And I'm like, oh. that's what we wanted. <laughs> but in all fairness, that was a very, very different image I had of Mamuti. <laughs> Obviously, it was Dilip. <laughs> Also, for the longest time, Shamini didn't know Dulka Salman was Mamuti's son. I was in, I'm not, I'm not a movie person. Like, I won't even know Holly. Like, they know how bad my Hollywood references are. So it's not like it's because it's Malayalam. It's, it's generally like pop culture. Yeah. yeah. No, it's right, pop culture. No, no, no. My pop culture is zero. Like zero. Absolutely. That's why. Like, if you ask Shamini about Ozymandias or something, she'll know about that. Of <laughs> but, but, but if you ask her who is, uh, I don't know. Who's, who's on Desperate Housewives right now, she wouldn't I know. I was in school where someone uh, was like, um, do you like Aston Martin, the car? And you thought I don't know why I'm too? saying this, but yeah. So I was like, oh, is he, isn't he the cute guy? <laughs> and they were like, oh, okay. <laughs> He finally got his answer Aryan, now. So monologues are very, uh, you know, they're going viral. They're very popular these days, uh, especially because of your voice. We, we've also tried our hand at monologues and, you know, how to come. So we realize that it's a lot of work that goes in, right? You know, there's like you said, there's there's a lot of work that goes into uh, influencer life that nobody understands. So what is your process behind the monologues? Because they're really good. Um, thank you. Uh, so, like, the, I realized recently that the, the reason I'm good at it is because uh, my mom taught me to take notes when I have to study, and it's basically like condensing like three pages worth of stuff into like bullet points. And you can't take up a lot of space because you need to revise. So that process of uh, condensing information is, I think, the biggest key in creating monologues because a lot of people, what they do is they put in information that's unnecessary. Then uh, once you have the information that you want to convey, it is the question is, how do you, what is the most interesting way of conveying this? And I think that's it. Like to me, that just comes naturally. So, I yeah. feel like it's also you're like very honest with your experience. You aren't sugarcoating yeah. anything. So like I think people like relate to that also. Like. Speaking of content creation, now coming to the brother. <laughs> cool. Um, you have shifted from Instagram to YouTube. Why yeah. the transition? Instagram sucks. <laughs> hey, uh, some of us are still on Instagram. So. No, I make all my money on Instagram, so I shouldn't say that. But. Uh, I make longer form content, yeah. so just just as my vlogs, I can't condense into it into reels, which are now right now 90 seconds, but before that it was 60 seconds. And I like shooting things on landscape instead of portrait. So, I mean, it's I think YouTube is a lot harder than Instagram, <clears throat> but I feel like if you crack YouTube, the payoff is way more than cracking on Instagram. So, so uh, what would you say is your go-to right now? Obviously, it's YouTube, but but you start. Yeah, I started off on Instagram like. Uh, but I think even in content you need to evolve. Mm -hmm. So initially I used to make videos with my grandmom. Uh, I used to make videos, a lot of videos at home, just irritating people. Then I, so I think there was a point of that time when, I mean, it was fun making videos with my grandmom, but it was almost mechanical because we, like, I know what I'm going to say and I know she, what she's going to say. So you need to explore more. So that's how I started making videos with my friends and just like a vlog, this thing. So initially I used to put it on Instagram because I have, most of my viewers are on Instagram. But then I just decided to take the risk and put it on YouTube because long run, I feel like that's going to, yeah, it's like, it's a show. It's my, it's like, I'm the director and I'm, okay. it's my show and these are my friends and it's life through my eyes. Another issue with Instagram is that in the Indian space, it's like, 
if you have like a one joke and then you can write it for 30 seconds and then you can sit in front of a camera and talk that's that's all you need yeah. so there is not there is no experimentation there is no creativity there's no actual thought so so anything that when you put actually put in effort and then there's no pay off there it hurts so youtube youtube is much kinder in that way cuz and nothing in instagram is you upload a reel today and then you upload seven more reels every day cuz you need to be regular that seventh reel is gone like nobody ever see it ever again it's always the this thing to stay relevant so like yeah. you're always looking for like there's no lasting with your work yeah honestly it's a it's a creative choice i believe like uh, it depends on on what you're trying to convey like when like he said you know when it comes to his life it's about showcasing something uh through his eyes and his life and you cannot do that in say 60 seconds or 30 seconds that which is how you stay relevant on instagram uh whereas if you if you are somebody else who likes to do something very short and very quick and very works crisp, uh up to a certain extent on instagram as well it's it's a creative choice and it, it like i'm like on instagram like i i only have an instagram page as of now and whatever i do whatever revenue i get it comes from instagram it doesn't come from anywhere else but whereas for sharan it's youtube and it can be something else or somebody else there are people who do carousel posts right so i think it's a it's a creative yeah, choice i, I would also say. feel like you should diversify because yeah. like yeah exactly Instagram that's also just die like what yeah. happened to tiktok so you have your legs in like multiple platforms uh-huh. because they, because that's just a smarter thing to do so uh, when it comes to brand collaborations how do you choose your brands all of you uh, whatever pays good money that's right. it like <laughs> yeah. so, what about your identity like like you you've been using a certain brand wouldn't you want to be a part of that i mean f- fortunately for me i've worked with good brands like i don't think i've worked with brands which i don't relate to on a personal level i've just been lucky that way okay. i mean it took a longer time for me to achieve that but like I've done stuff stuff with like amazon pizza hut uh, red bull like i love red like i drink two yeah. cans of red bull a day when red bull approached me i'm like you have no idea how much i love you guys <laughs> so that way i've been lucky so i haven't really done anything i don't really understand but i'm not saying that if somebody were to give me like 20 lakh rupees i would say no to something i'd be like yeah that's my favorite rice <laughs> brand <laughs> so yeah and same as he said you know i mean we've not really i haven't done anything i don't like personally like i mean i don't dislike anything i've done i use it every day right. but like it's okay i mean spending my money is- I I I can't say because I haven't really done brand partnerships <laughs> ever in my life but uh, but like you know one thing I've <coughs> found interesting is like you know Shamuli was is is currently partnered with a with a what do you call it sexual health brand yeah. and the th- amount of things I've learned just by watching her reels I definitely try to reach out to brands I relate to and I want to sort of promote okay. so there are a few brands which I have myself reached out when you know it's possibly come through and proactive the brand that he's talking about is something that i am very like passionate about like sexual health sexual education um so that is like obviously when brands like that come across it's great he just got another 50000 rupees just for saying that <laughs> <laughs> what are the challenges that you faced while trying to monetize your instagram or your influencer oh, oh. Uh, uh, people uh, yeah go for it people think that we it's raining cash and we ha- we don't have to do anything <laughs> okay it's just raining cash we shake a tree and then money falls and you know it's all about the privileged life and how rich we are Honestly, but not, uh it's it that's not the truth yeah. and uh, also ha- it's really hard to work with bra- brands like it's not like an easy like like very pleasurable sort yeah, of yeah especially thing, yeah. because we are all our own managers like yeah, we have yeah. to like do the first hand talking yeah. and negotiate i feel like the yeah. brands don't know how to like put out their product cuz people at the people making the decisions aren't people who sit on instagram yeah, and know what yeah. they, they still have the old way of like I just want to like, say that all these people are talking bad about brands but <laughs> i have not said a single thing i love brands all of you no no i feel so personally for me i love making brand videos cuz i want to show that it's an ad like that's yeah, yeah. i want to directly no, say but i'm okay with showing it's an ad i'm Now just saying no makeup no i mean i'm still saying the truth like, like <laughs> <you're talking about. laughs> no i'm okay with showing that it's an ad but it's just like you need to still give some creative freedom you know you know your audience better than i do so you tell me what you want to do there are brands that do that some of them do yeah. i mean luckily 80% of my my brands do that 20% will be like you know what this is the script we want you to do the easy breezy hair like like she said it's okay to present something as a mad but you have yeah. to be aware of it like the 
like this you is can't an question the intelligence of your viewers because yeah. yeah. that that yeah. alien is everybody knows it's an ad at the end of the day my favorite if you can go find it dear viewer my favorite comment on an ad that they did was i've seen, I've seen better acting <laughs> <in the world." laughs> <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah we 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 like that comment yeah. actually <laughs> Arin and uh, Gai, you both of you collaborate with each other. Like you shoot for each other, you edit for each other. What is it that connects the both of you? Love. Like, <laughs> like you need. Love. I could hear something. Complete the heart. Love. 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 Like they are the first people who were like, "Whoa, this is insane!" And I was like, "Really? Should I make more?" They were like, "Yeah, you should." So in that sense, uh, I wouldn't be taking photos. Also, like she is the first model I worked with, and one of the few models I worked with. So in that way, I've been very influenced by her. Um, so yeah, I think we bounce a lot of ideas off each other. Scripts, and we're always asking each other, "Do you like this?" Do you not yeah, like, like, this? like he said, like I've also like I started modeling because I. couldn't go up and talk to other people and ask if can you model for me so there was that and then like you you were also like the first person that i asked like hey can you model for me so it kind of so yeah, it yeah kind of we became friends it. because she was like hey do you want to model and then i was like yeah and then we mod we did a shoot and then we got along well cuz i was a fan i was like a huge fan uh, <laughs> ideology is are like pretty similar I I remember the fan. I never understand what they're talking about. I remember the fan thing. For instance, I think uh, was the cocoa tree that she yeah, used to. Yeah, get, yeah. Uh, there was this cafe where she used to go and uh, draw, doodle on the this thing. It was like a thing that she did every month or every two weeks. Yeah, I started off by just doing artwork initially. And Arin would be super excited if she if she turned up while we were there. We used to like practically live in this cafe. Yeah, I used to be like, oh my god, this guy. Yeah, we were. And I couldn't like when I saw him, I was like, Shh, I couldn't talk. <laughs> oh my god, it's my hero. <laughs> like, then again, like we used to like I used to run into Sharon a lot. And like yeah, we all in the same city, but we never so like. You mentioned ideology. What is this ideology that uh, she talked about? Um, for me, it is. I like things knowing what they are. So that can be in fashion. That can be, and and I like things being out there also. But that self awareness is important in all work. I think that uh, like not restricting yourself to any particular tools or any particular um, aesthetic. per se like experimenting constantly i think that's something like initially like my most of my exposure to fashion was like through magazines and stuff and there was always growing up there was always like oh you can't wear stripes with there were a lot of rules to like everything like i got comfortable slowly with everything like through art i like slowly start broke into like doing makeup and experimenting with makeup then fashion and all that so i always i was always told that initially i wanted to be a stylist and only a stylist so like i was told that if you if you were to be a stylist you need to have one style and my style was constantly changing and i thought i was very conflicted by that so i realized that it, there's no like set rules to everything especially if you're in a creative field if you have a set box of thinking that's not going to get you anywhere so like that's where like we find our common ground because arin's always experimenting and like he Does inspires me to like you know art you all consume It's like similar. Right? I mean, yeah, like I love movies and like I like get most of my inspiration from like movie and music and all that. He is more in, uh, inspired by me. Music, anime, like I don't watch many movies, yeah. but yeah, and we share stuff with each other. <laughs> That's his pet name. <laughs> oh, those kind. Of Aryans is uh, Kuri. That's what we call him at home. Are you serious, really? Yeah, Kuri. Yeah, Ga Ga Gayu's pet name is Gayu. <laughs> Her actual name is Gayatri. Ink blot. Okay. <laughs> Shamuli's is. I call her Jamoli. I call her Shamo. <laughs> Angrels is usually Aggie, but I hear Aggie, yeah, but it's Aggie. Aggie. So Shamuli Kuri calls me a very loving. Don't name. Don't oh! <laughs> don't say it. Don't say it out loud. For yeah. Yeah. But yeah, my real pet name none of these people know is Paku. Paku. Yeah. Why? I also call him. I also call Agram Tingston. Like his name is saved as Tingston on my phone because Wait, Tingston you know, is longer than his actual name. Yeah, Tingston is Tovino's elder brother's name, so that's why his name is Tingston. He's Tovino. I'm Tingston apparently. <laughs> none of us. Was, mine, mine, mine's very proud. 
Definitely not us. Stumble into me in my bedroom. French toast. French toast. French toast. French toast. Pineapple nagar. We are all. Or my bedroom. Always there. The bedroom. So do you guys get special treatment over there? No, we get there. most treatment because we are always there. Or <laughs> Star, or Starbucks, Panamprina. They're just telling us to get out all the time. Yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, your pasta, yeah, that can wait. <laughs> Just be anything. Just be, and he's annoyed. <laughs> this just creates such say, a wrong say, impression. Say something for the camera. <laughs> I like people. He's a Labrador, so I don't get annoyed. I'm a really chill person like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm super chill. Yeah, like I'm people never are irritated. Uh, Shamini, you get irritated by being late, and I'm yeah. always late. That's everybody, not yeah. excluding. Different, different standards. I am just the latest. Agrim is also late. Agrim is also late. No, no. Sharon, guy, you're not Sharon. You have to go. When you have to go, imagine you have something really important, like you have to catch a flight to Timbuktu. Sharon, everybody will be ready. Sharon, like, guys, I have to take a shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's gone. <laughs> My time and attention. <laughs> I think. Sharan, I think all gifts are expensive. I think I yeah, gave. I think I gave Arjun a laptop. Yeah, that was obviously. Do you know I I bought that myself? What are you talking Shut about? Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. I'm done. The iPhone, the iPhone <laughs> and the MacBook. The iPhone and the MacBook are the most expensive, right? Yeah. Yeah. I gave my dad an iPhone. Oh yeah, yeah. Shamoli's. Shamoli's. Paid holiday for Karan to Dubai. That's the most expensive gift. No, no, right after there. after the match. What about the watch? The watch I split with ah, you, your fair. parents. Yeah, so okay. gifts, but yeah. uh, probably that camera also. I bought that camera for him. It was like three lakh. Charan's life has been gifted by us. Just the clothes he's wearing on his Ooh, back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. We gifted yeah. him. This is not a vlog. It keeps changing. <laughs> that is your model face. <laughs> I don't think I can do it. Charles doing this model picture. I don't know. I don't know what you expect from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I get asked for like feet pictures. Feet pictures. No, this is a common thing. I always yeah, send them. Whenever they ask me, I send them photos. I said if you can pay. I mean, I'm joking. <laughs> Have you actually Sorry? sent one? I mean, if they can pay, I don't mind. <laughs> Having been the person who asked her for the feet pictures, no, I can confirm. <laughs> uh, people think that uh, Arin has a really small penis. That's not. That's not true. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's, wrong. it's mediocre. It's fake news media. <laughs> people also think. Like, people also think we are in French toast all the time in Palmer. We are also in French toast in Kacheri Padi. <laughs> Sometimes. French toast. Uh, French toast. <laughs> French toast. <laughs> French toast. <laughs> French toast. Stock. Just people also stock. think Sharan and Arjun are related. Yeah. He's adopted. Okay, here's the secret. No, yeah, here's yeah, the secret. Nobody knows Sharan and I are dating. I was going to say guy who are dating. <laughs> I've kissed everyone in this. That, that's actually, that's actually, that's true. actually true. That's true. Technically, we've all. Come <laughs> yeah. Everyone <on. laughs> in this in this group has seen Sharan. Uh, <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. That's a lie. I haven't. I, have, I, have, I, have, have, I always <laughs> shut my eyes. Now you know what to do today. I have. I promise to God, I cannot affirm whether his penis is small, mediocre, or big. I have not seen it. Mediocre is not a size. I mean, <laughs> medium. <laughs> mediocre. Could be mediocre. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seeing other people really See, drunk and us. taking videos of them uh, is my high. I love it. Imagine being the only sober person in a group full of like drunk people. I don't think he needs to be. Yeah. Oh, no, don't make him sing. Don't make him sing. Don't make him sing. Oh, no, 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 no. oh my no, 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 no. god. Arjun, we can't do that. We can't do that. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ask the question again. Trust me. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's a hard question. I hate you like I love you. I hate you like I love you. Yeah, probably that one. I'm binge watching The Office. I'm binge watching. This is not a vlog. Represent. I used to be very ashamed of this, but I'm binge watching Selling Sunset. <laughs> the Boys. I love that show. Yeah. Yeah. Have you watched the latest episode? Yeah, I did. Okay. Hero Gasm. No, Stop it. Sorry. Uh, I watch a lot of. Football videos. I watch a lot of this sort of vlog, but yeah, that's. I'm reading a lot now. He's binge reading. I've been reading, I've been reading a lot of murder mysteries. Example. Uh, the Honjin murders, the Tokyo Zodiac murders, uh, Malice. He basically reads the murder mysteries so he can rate them on Instagram, and then girls will message him saying, "Oh my God, oh you're my so God, cute!" But you also read. Please recommend me more books while we hang out. 
in my bedroom that type of thing i only love you i didn't point i just looked okay